Serbian authorities are in the middle of a witch hunt against critical intellectuals whose most recent victim, Sreten Ugricic, was for over a decade the successful director of the National Library. It's around seven in the morning we have an appointment with Ugricic at Belgrade train station. He's gained national and international renown for modernising Serbia's national library, his writing and for his struggle for democratic values. But after signing an appeal for better protection of freedom of thought and expression, he was targeted in a virulent media campaign. Then the politicians stepped in. The Minister of the Interior, a close ally of the late Yugoslavian ruler Slobodan Milosevic, called an emergency government phone session, usually a procedure reserved for natural disasters. Ugracic was sacked immediately afterwards. One reason is, is obviously political one. Uh, this is the uh, pre-election campaign period and uh, this campaign is a very brutal one. And um, um, my case, so-called case, started when uh, Minister of Police himself uh, uh, declared publicly in front of journalists that I am uh, uh, that I'm supporting terrorism. Other Serbian writers who signed the free speech appeal are afraid the crackdown is coming for them too. Parliamentary elections are in May and the heat is rising. Strong backing doesn't just come from fellow writers such as young poet Milos Zivanovic and novelist Mirjana Djurjevic. The sacking of Ugricic has led to a worldwide outcry. Among others, the International Federation of Library Associations sent an official protest letter to the Serbian president and government stating that library organizations in Europe and all over the world have been shocked about the media campaign and subsequent dismissal. The European Commission and diplomats are digging into the case too. During the times of the repressive Milosevic regime, when the system wanted to react, it killed you. It killed journalists. Today, when the system wants to react, they fire you. So that's what happened to him. You can write anything you like. You can bark at the stars if you like. But as soon as they have a reason to act against you, everything, really everything will change in seconds. They'll start to needle-pick at every single word you say or write. And within seconds, the situation becomes a real nightmare. Just like in a book by George Orwell. Milos and Mirjana are heading for Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia-Herzegovina, to meet Bosnian writer colleagues. Inter-regional exchanges like this are rare. Travelling from Belgrade to Sarajevo involves two international border crossings and three engine changes. Four railway companies each jealously guard their stretch. And soon when Croatia joins the European Union, the Balkan train will cross EU territory. Miroslav Stanic's father was an engine driver, so was his grandfather. It makes him sad that so few passengers take this famous train nowadays. The reopening of this train link means that people can travel again, they can socialize, they can meet again. In the former Yugoslavia, many more people use this train. At the first border crossing, the Serbian engine is changed for a Croatian one. Croatia joins the European Union next year. At the start of March, notwithstanding serious doubts about Serbia's reform path, EU leaders also green-lighted its application for EU candidate status. The remaining problems to be tackled are huge. Independent observers note almost no progress in Serbia to stop corruption. Political parties have infiltrated Serbian business and vice versa. It's made worse by no independent media, say Mira and Milos. Things that would not be possible in Croatia are possible in Serbia when you compare the media freedom in both countries. In Serbia, most editors will willingly censor articles and fire critical journalists. That's due to the fact that in Serbia, most media are owned or closely controlled by politicians. There are too many of those lies published. I can't bear it any longer, so I stopped reading some of those crappy newspapers and watching those crappy programs, because there are too many lies. Well, and bad news will reach me anyway. After the last elections, we published a mocking photomontage, a caricature of Interior Minister Ivica Dacic from the Socialists, Milosevic's old party, throwing the president of Serbia, Boris Tadic, from the pro-EU Democratic Party, onto a bull's horns. 
On the same day, our editor-in-chief got a very, very unpleasant phone call from those people controlling the media and buying advertising space in the media. And they told our editor, if you want to use bullfight images, go right ahead, but we won't be buying any ads in your newspaper anymore. Early evening, Myra and Milos arrive in Sarajevo. Their dinner date's an old town restaurant with Farik Sehic, a well-known and much-translated Bosnian author who tries to face haunting war memories by writing about them. Central cultural institutions in Bosnia-Herzegovina are on the brink of collapse because nationalists of every stripe have no interest in making them work, he says, especially blaming the Republika Srpska, the Serbian regional entity of Bosnia-Herzegovina. And what about reconciliation? <laughs> There's no will amongst the politicians for real reconciliation because all their apologies are mere declarations. Their statements just serve political purposes. Maybe ordinary people or artists like us are ready to be reconciled, but not the politicians. Time to say goodbye to Sarajevo. On their way to the train station, Mira and Milos pop into Sain Pasic Bookshop, the biggest bookseller all over Bosnia-Herzegovina. Regional literature's popular, and Sarajevans are hungry for novels written by authors from neighbouring countries. It seems that between regional publishing houses, cooperation works. One more cup of coffee for the road, and then back to Belgrade. One of the biggest taboo topics in Serbia today is Kosovo, the European Union's emphatic. This frozen regional conflict has to be solved peacefully before Serbia can join the EU. Full normalization is in both Kosovo and Serbia's interests. I think that Kosovo has been separated from Serbia for quite some time now, but I am convinced that none of our politicians would be brave enough to say this politically because this would lead to a big loss of votes on election day. Once the Bosno-Bosnian engine is changed for a Serbo-Bosnian one, the speed drops. Why does it take an entire day to link Sarajevo to Belgrade, some 400 kilometers apart, we asked the engine driver, while crossing the Republika Srpska? In the former Yugoslavia, there was one single railway company, but today each country, or even each entity within a country, runs their own engines. In his literary periodical Beton, Milos combs through contemporary novels, poems, speeches, all kinds of cultural and social phenomena to see if they're contaminated by nationalistic thinking, by open or hidden hate speech. He's one of the very rare Serbian writers to have set up a stunning cooperation project with Albanian-speaking writers from Kosovo. In cooperation with colleagues from Pristina, we published in Serbia's capital, Belgrade, a collection of new Albanian literature from Kosovo, translated into Serbian, called From Pristina with Love. At the same time, its twin was published in Pristina, in Albanian, a collection of the latest Serbian short stories written by young Serbian authors called From Belgrade with Love. Milos's favorite poem is called Uskuru, remembering his maybe lost dream of multiple identities coexisting peacefully together. In my heart I am Albanian, the poem goes. In my heart I am a Muslim, a Gypsy, an Arab, a Spaniard, a young American, a prophet and a priest, a Latino, a Byzantine.